Good afternoon. My name is Kent Scornia, President and uh, CEO of Crilogy. This is my partner, John MacArthur, Chief Investment Officer here at Crilogy, and this is your May market perspective. Uh, John, summer's upon us. Yes. Kids are getting out of school. Kids are coming home from school. Um, lots going on in the markets, lots going on in the economy. We've got mm -hmm. votes happening right now with the debt ceiling, right? Uh, this speak. whole AI thing is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we got the Fed in a couple weeks. Yeah. How, how you feeling? Lots, uh, lots to digest. I think, um, you know, when we uh, specifically those three or four things, I think it's important for investors to recognize that a lot of that is just noise, uh, you know, that that is going to ebb and flow on a day to day basis. Um, the market, generally speaking, is is very aware of, of all of those um, different cross currents that are happening. And, um, you know, I think I think for investors to to be thinking about um, really the, the earnings backdrop. It's more fundamental, I think, in 2023 as, yeah. we, as we get to the middle part of the year. Last year's story was really about, you know, we've been in this low, low uh, policy um, interest rate period for a decade plus. Um, that's changing kind of the shock that, that goes along with that. And uh, it's, it's no longer about does the Fed go, you know, another 25 basis points in two weeks? Do they pause? Do they rest? I mean, it's, you know, the, the heavy lifting's over. Yeah. Um, it's really about what are, the, what are the spillover effects, if any, that remain from, um, from historic policy and the speed in which they've done it? And how, you know, how does the earnings uh, stabilization picture play out? And, and by all accounts, um, you know, we've seen earnings holding strong revisions come down, you know, 14% or so from the middle of 2022. Right. And, um, you know, when we look out quarters ahead, it's, it's stabilizing and that's, that's a good, that's a good that's sign. Want, right. It's yeah. a good sign so far. Uh, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan mm -hmm. states that, uh, we could go to six or 7% in interest rates. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was probably born out of this recent, um, PCE, um, it's a, one of the more important Fed. Yeah, um, the read. Yep. Yeah, Fed reads in terms of inflationary pressures. It actually crept up for April. It had been in a kind of slow, steady descent, but you know, there's evidence of a of a, a stickiness to inflation. The job market, at least in how we in the, in the Fed or look at the numbers, is still really strong. I mean, um, ADP yeah. came out this morning. Right, it was right. on fire. You know, uh, yeah. the payroll were up, right? Um, pretty dramatically, but yep. really in small to medium sized businesses, large yep. enterprises, you know, thousand people or more, uh, actually let people go, right? Uh, in that, but small and medium sized businesses are hiring still. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still a pretty tight, pretty tight labor market, and uh, you know, I think that's where his comments were probably stem from, and just get ready, you know, not not only are we're not cutting rates as the market was pricing. And really after the Silicon Valley Bank and the regional bank stress, yeah. uh, fortunately that was met with pretty, pretty effective policy immediately, which prevented that from becoming a systematic issue. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a stickiness uh, to the inflationary picture, although it is coming down. It is it's coming just down. higher than that you know, 2% target. But so. it's interesting, you know, Mm -hmm. um, sort of in a, in a normal economic cycle, if you see strong um, labor market like that, you'd be excited. Absolutely. Now we see those readings are like, uh oh, right, right. Inflation is well, going to be there. What does it mean for the Fed? Interest yeah. rates are going to go higher. Yeah, that's got to be stronger, mm -hmm. right? And that's a challenge. You know, in a strange way, a, you know, now that the market's pricing in less cuts for right. the remainder, it's a good thing. I mean, yeah. if this Positive. if this economy can and the consumer and corporations broadly can withstand um, higher rates for longer. And, and that's what we're actually met with. That's probably a good thing. It's, Absolutely. you know, historically speaking, post first cut, you know, on average in, in recessionary type of environments, the market bottoms, um, you know, more than six months later, right. uh, typically. So I, I don't, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion at this point that the recession um, happens. It just may happen a lot later than many are expecting. True. And you never so. know when you're in a session or in a recession, right? right? right. I mean, we always never after do. the fact. It's always after the fact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read you something that you sent out uh, this morning to all of our wealth advisors uh, from your team and your portfolio managers. Okay. And yeah. I think it's I think it's important uh, to give us context in my next question. Uh, we've been consciously underweight international equity for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. and it's served our clients well as it, international equity, have been a consistent underperformer 
broadly characterized by a world of declining interest rates, strong U.S. dollar, and in an environment where longer duration equity assets such as technology and growth, broadly speaking, have outperformed. Mm -hmm. um, effectively, what you're saying there is um, we've been patient with international equity. But I can remember days 10 plus years ago, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. when we sat in investment committee mm -hmm. and uh, it was the opposite. Right. International was on fire. Right. S&P 500 was always lagging. Yeah. Uh, the script has slipped, has slipped on you, yeah. right? And, and that's what you're predicting at this moment. Yeah, prior cycles have, have you know, that's a, a distant memory <laughs> in investors' minds, right. really, when you look at the 03 to 07 period in particular, dominated by consistent international and emerging market outperformance. Um, you know, and, and, and finally, we, we've looked at for excuses over the years to, um, to, to get more even weight or perhaps overweight international. And it just, up, up until recently, um, it's, it's, it, as the way that we see it, it's fitting together from a number of different, um, fronts. I mean, we're, we're going through now, you know, typically change in cycle, change in leadership, um, you know, which is very different for investors and right. it's, it's natural to anchor on what's worked in the recent past and recent long past, really, if you think about large cap tech, even looking at this year, year to date, I mean, a hundred percent of the S and P returns are from the top seven names. Absolutely. Equal weight s and is actually negative year to date. Um, small caps negative year to date. So, um, so yeah, we think the ingredients are there. Um, you know, looking at valuations in the developed foreign space. Um, you know, 13 times earnings compared to 18 to 19 here. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to hard to ignore that. Peak dollar we think is behind us. We think on a on a longer term secular basis that uh, weaker dollar again tailwind for international investing. Generally speaking, you've got stronger cash flows, higher yields, um, and then they're underloved and unowned. Right. And then, you know, I think there's some some catch up. So even if we don't get to multiples that the U.S. trades at, which we wouldn't expect to, um, we think there's probably a, a catch up. Yeah, there's some on great a multi year perspective. There. What I love about what you all do and how flexible you are is you guys, uh, you know, and, and, and with the ability to be tactical, you can do it at a pretty, pretty mm -hmm. quick, pretty, pretty quick pace. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, and that adds some flexibility to what you're doing. Well, that's a credit to our trade team and, um, you know, Charles Flecky and, and Paul Ray and, you know, the rest of the of the team um, can help use the infrastructure and, and make things happen really fast. And yeah. our trading platforms and the technology to do it. S&P is up 9, 10 percent this year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, are we all very, clear? Very quiet. Or is the worst yet to come? Uh, yeah, it's a, you know, we've you know, we're, we're up. You know, as you said, nine to ten percent this year. I mentioned though, it's it's largely dominated by large cap tech. Yeah, that's got to change. Um, you know, either we're going to catch up, meaning the rest of the four hundred ninety three S and P five hundred companies are going to are going to catch up and catch a bid here um, sooner than later, or or tech's going to catch down, fizzle, fizzle out, if maybe. you will. Yeah, and I, you know, I think it's you know, look, we're in a, a two year stagnant period. Um, S and P's gone nowhere. Literally, look back two years from now, S and P's at the same level, and I think that's the fear. I think, you know, I think from a behavior and bias perspective, investors tend to want to anchor on the most dramatic, which is an 08 type scenario. Right. Very different environment, different backdrop. Consumers and corporations are very healthy coming into this last, you know, call it 12 to 18 months. Um, that said. Mm -hmm investors still need and expect return and and we're really thinking just about looking elsewhere it's cash flow it's global yeah and i think this is going to sound a little commercial like but um that's why we love having our experts in-house yep. um yep. with the ability to make the decisions really quick yep. uh, and our traders at the call to make the make the moves that we need for our clients so yep. um, anything else out there to consider i would just um I would just, you know, remind, I feel like it's a kind of a, a broken record in saying this, but um, bias and behavioral influence are uh, a curse for successful investing. So just being cognizant of, of, of letting what you think should happen get in the way of, of the portfolio construction and management process, number one. Um, I think the second thing, as we talked about in terms of all clear, um, definitely not all clear, right. um, but you know, as, as we think about, you know, the equity risk budget, we are probably neutral to underweight. If mm -hmm. anything, this is not an environment to be taking excessive risk with, you know, the S&P at the 4200 plus level or thereabout. Um, look, we're up 11 percent from the lows at the index level from March, 20 percent since October lows. 
um, there's a lot left to still prove. Um, so I think you know, a patient approach and mindful of when it's appropriate to take risk or not. And yep. uh, we don't think that's that environment now. But, you know, the last thing I would say is um, don't think large tech, think globally. Yeah. You know, a currency valuation. Love that thing. Yeah. Love that um, thing. Um, so. and, and, and we appreciate all the efforts you, yep. that your team is doing. I mean, they're putting in massive Thank amounts you. of time, effort and energy. And uh, we just appreciate all their work. So Thank you. Uh, and we appreciate uh, you, our clients who have uh, just been with us for years and given us the opportunity to be stewards of your wealth. Uh, for John MacArthur, I'm Kent Scorney. This is your May Mark Perspective. We wish you an amazing summer and uh, enjoy this warm weather. Thank, Thank you. you.